All right, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How's everything been? As good as it can be. I hear that. I hear I'm that. Sure. It hour by hour. Hour by hour. I mean, there's no other way to do it, right? No. You know, it's you funny. Know. It's funny. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's just it's funny because I think I think my wife had um told me about she showed me some meme, and it was like during this time it's like you can't get off the phone with people because you can't have an excuse like oh I, I gotta go somewhere I gotta <laughs> don't work mm -mm, it's not working. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was great. Great to see you. Great to be in conversation again. Um, Brown Juice Barbershop, right? Back at it. My Back favorite at it. one now. My favorite thing. Beautiful. Be beautiful. Um, it's my favorite thing, too. Something to look forward to. Right? Yeah, for sure. For, for sure. sure. For sure. So I see you. What you got? You got The Nation on there? What you rocking? Come on. Come on. You know this paper? Talk about it. The Nation magazine is the oldest newspaper in the country. Hmm. When, when uh, Abraham Lincoln was shot, um, a number of abolitionists wanted to keep his mission and ideas in place. They started a newspaper that was committed to being um, the most truthful journalism possible talking about America. Hmm. And so this shirt, um, I need a tour, I need a civil rights tour with them every year. A couple okay. times, I should say. Okay. And we took junior high school kids, kids for the first time. We usually take adults who are all seniors who, are, who read the magazine, who are older, and great, you know, activist people who are like ready, you know. And so for the kids, we made these shirts. And in the shirts, if you look at it, what it is is it's um, imagining Thurgood Marshall swearing in Obama mm. and his cooperation and all the ancestors that would have been there. Wow. Right? Wow. Clark, Frederick Douglass, you know, you got everybody up in here. That's dope. Lincoln's up in there, Gandhi's on here, King's on there, Rustin. It's like, what would it mean if all those people, all they were there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were there, standing around? But here is a visual representation of it. That's dope. That's dope. dope. That's that beautiful. What you rock? Right here, I'm rocking. I'm rocking another shirt that I got from uh, the store I had mentioned before, the movement. Um, it's a red, black, and green flag, but it's the, also the American flag. So it's the red, black, and green American flag. You know, for those folks who may not know, red, black, and green flag. You know, there was a song back in the day that said that every respectable, you know, race had a flag except for the, you know what, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. um, my man, Marcus Garvey was like, oh, word, bet. We need to have a, you know, you need a flag. You know, we have to have the red, black, and green. Um, so I rock it um, because one, and I, actually I rocked this um, on MLK Day uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing something for a day of service um, mm -hmm. at my institution. Um, rocked it because, you know, I'm like, listen, we are part of America because we built America. So let's talk about it. Um, but yeah, just really thinking about, you know, what it means to have your own nation. I used to joke about being in, uh, when I was in college, I was like, yeah, you know, African-American, we need to start an African-American association because honestly, truth be told, um, you know, a lot of folks who were representing, you know, the black and brown community, they were from Caribbean, um, or they were from, uh, Africa and, you know, mm -hmm. me, I'm like, eh, okay. Eh. So yeah, you know, I used to joke, say I was going to start my triple A club for the African-American <laughs> Alliance of Association. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I can't stop thinking of the song right now. Oh, goodness. The rest for the blood and the seas for the land. I love it. Who, yeah. who is that? Tell me. I don't, you, you, I don't remember. Which band is that? I don't remember the band. It's a hip-hop band. It's a hip-hop It's a hip-hop I, I feel like, oh, that's a shame. We'll come back to that. Come back to it. I'll research that. Throw it back yeah. on. Yes. yes, sir. It was my favorite. It was very, like, very, like, 90s hip-hop. Okay. Uh, it was a refrain in the song. It was kind of like a B-side album on like a hot crew. Got you. Got okay. you. We'll, we'll bring it back. Yes. We'll bring it yes. back. Well, we yes. have the toast, man. We got a toast. Yes. So first, yes. see, we got to see what you're sipping on, man. I have a new bottle. Hey, now. Slow and low. Yes, Somebody yes. I've, I've, my friend had put me on to that before. I had, really? it. I had it on ice. It tastes great. It's just like a drink. It's a drink in a bottle. Ooh. Got a little Jim Bean bonded. You know, I had to get a little stuff. Well, I heard things were closing down, you know. <laughs> well, I'm going to dig up into this. Oh, that's right, y'all. In Philadelphia, I don't know whose idea that was. What? It wasn't mine. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> it was not mine. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I, oh, that's a nice uh, court. Right court. Right mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going with you. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, my goodness. Let's get into it. Wow. This might be nice. Slow and low. Rock and ride. All right. Hey now. 
Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers, man. Good to see you. Likewise. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. How's the how's the gym being? It was good. You know, it was um, you know, there's there's some so my favorite, I think my favorite brewery, I mean not brewery, distillery, uh, uh -huh. is Heaven Hill. Um, yeah, yeah, I like yeah, their yeah. products. I really like Elijah Craig, you know, the, the lower end, the Evan Williams. But I like the sweetness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways, or their, you know, their their mash bill. And then I think with um with Jim Beam Bonded, I'm getting a little bit more corn. I can taste it a little bit more. So um not as sweet, it's a little bit more tame. Um, but I like it. I like it. I have a feeling you would love this. It's Straight rye whiskey, raw honey, navel orange, rock candy, and bitters. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Listen, that's, that's, see, now this is not something I would do, but if I were to, straight from the bottle, man, that's that sounds like something just straight from the bottle. You don't have to doctor it up. It don't need a separate glass. That's what it is. You yeah. know, the folks, the folks around the way can get a fifth of that. You know, <laughs> it's a day. It's a day. It's done. All right, all right. Well, listen, I, I got this, this shirt on, and the shirt kind of inspired a question that I have for you. Beautiful. If you want to get into it. I'm ready. All right. So, you know, I was thinking to myself, and like I said, you know, I was joking about starting AAA, the African American Association or Alliance, whatever. Um, but let's just say, right, post quarantine, post coronavirus, COVID 19, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you are instructed that you have to leave the United States of America never to return again where are you going oh, wow wow i can't lie about enjoying my um modern day conveniences uh oh man Wow, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Never to return to the United States. It's funny because my, my, my visual goes to Hawaii. Okay. So I lived there for half a minute, but ain't no black people. Or it's a very small amount of black people. And the ones that are visiting are just doing that visiting. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be very happy with that. Um, I do, what I do like about Hawaii, I tell, I tell, I tell, I tell I've told many Asian people, you should really visit Hawaii because there's your chance to be a majority on American soil, even though the colonialism is like um, palatable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope we So it feels weird because I never, I've never, I haven't, I haven't set my foot on the continent of Africa. Mm, likewise. But, what's that? Likewise, I haven't either. Mm -hmm. Well, that's we need to we need to do a live session from there. <laughs> Word. <laughs> That's a, that's a mission, but, and maybe that is my naive American stance, but I find myself thinking um, of places in Africa that I've read about and studied. You know, I really want to see Madagascar. Um, I hear it's kind of the best place to live because it's a, little bit, it's a bit rough and it's an island and the water and getting back to South Africa is a real intense. Um, oh man, killing me. You know, I like I like what uh, Nina Simone and them did in Liberia. Mm. They jetted, you know, and, and went over there and took part. And W. Du Bois, you know, um, but I don't know. Well, Liberia doesn't does seem very stable at the moment. Mm. Ghana is having an upswing, but it seems really rooted in tourism. I have friends in South Africa and Botswana. Mm. But what I hear and what I see, it looks just beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that is such a hard question to answer. Um, but if I must give an answer, I'm going to say, and it's no place I haven't been, um, Bahia in, El Sal in, uh, in, um, in, in Brazil. Okay. Um, Bahia, um, I'm trying to remember the, the actual state, uh, I think it begins with an S. Enjoy in the dark. Come on, give me, some, <laughs> give me power, give me power. <laughs> you had me at Brazil. Right, right, exactly. It's in Brazil, and it might be Salvador. Oh, what, I'm, I can't get it right now, but 
what I've what I've read and what I've heard from friends, and this is what makes me like it, Bahia, because of the power of African cultures and their survival and the difference in slavery in, in Brazil as a whole, I've heard and learned that in Bahia, some African traditions are more intact than they are in parts of Africa. Wow. And it's a beautiful place, you know, beaches, the land, the weather, the climate. Um, not the society may not have all the amenities that I want. I don't know, I haven't been there. Mm -hmm. But based on everything I've heard and my friends who talk about it and the freedom, you know, part of the, one of the models is, is if it feels good, do it, mm. you know? And I think it's very important to listen to where my aesthetic is appreciated and celebrated. And from what I understand, the intensity of the African culture and the beauty and the celebration of dark skin mm. makes me like interested. You ever, you ever have those moments when you're talking to somebody who is of like Middle Eastern descent, mm -hmm. look at you in a way that feel, they feel more comfortable with like mm -hmm. your dark skin? Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine said, with my beard. Yeah, right, exactly. Forget about it. Forget about it. A friend said, yeah, because you're familiar to them. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of what happens here in America. So wherever I go, I'll be seeking that. So without having been there, I'm going to um, say Bahia. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's a place I need to take a look at. You know, we might be rolling together. Um, mm -hmm. For me, you know, I'm, I um, fortunately, I have, a, I have a place that would take me. So my wife is Haitian American. Uh, uh, her parents are from Haiti. So I would go to the first Black Republic, right? If 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 that were the case, I would go to the first Black Republic. However, if that wasn't the case, I would go to any African nation that would have me. <laughs> I'm like, not, I'll be knocking on doors, trying to schedule meetings. You know, can you let a brother in? Um, right. You know, because I never did a 23andMe. I didn't do no Ancestors.com. I have no idea. I didn't trace the roots, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe I can holler at Skip Gates, see if he can, uh, you know, help me find my roots or something. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Skip, and Erica. Can Erica help you out? Yes, yes. Yes, did yes. You know, yeah, it's interesting, that whole conversation, and I've heard many people talk about this, that when they go to Africa, the motherland experience is not what you read about. Mm because you are a foreigner to people who live in a country. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I still think, I still would, I imagine I would feel some sort of connection. Mm -hmm. with, um, and think, you know, where we come from. I, I just, I always, you know how you walk around and see people that look like people? Yeah. I want to walk around like, you have like my walk, you have my features, you have my mannerisms that are just centuries old from people living and walking and, and eating and being a certain way. Um, that's what I think some of the notions that attract me to Africa. It's very interesting that neither of us have set a foot on that continent. Well, well, that's beautiful because, like, like you said, we have goals to set. One, you know, doing a live episode from there. But also, I mean, can we get a film get, going on? What, hey. what, what, what about a film? Hey. <laughs> what about a film, man? Who is out there listening that wants to fund the <laughs> Brown Juice Barbershop International version? We're ready. Listen, listen we, I've been, I need to make a pilgrimage. Um, I need to go. Uh, I've never been to the motherland. Um, I need to retrace my roots. What would be, you know, I wonder if this would be a good opportunity. Like if, I don't know if there's a, a company out there that does it already, but to literally like trace the transatlantic slave trade, like to literally go to the places, all of the places if possible. Mm. Um, like what the ship's route would have been. Uh, where folks got dropped off and then getting a little bit of history along the way. I wonder what that might look like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, in terms of the, uh, a real in-depth yes. search and deep. I wonder, my, my first thought is, I wonder how much of, of that the heart could take. It'll be a heavy trip. It'll, it'll be a heavy trip. I mean, you're, I wouldn't do it twice. I tell you that. Like, <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that, but I think like, so, so one of the most powerful experiences I've had, so I, I used to travel when I was doing admissions work, um, and I went to the African American History Museum in Detroit, Michigan. My goodness, one of the exhibits that they had, you literally enter onto what is a slave ship, yeah. and you start at the top, and then you descend, similar to how like, you know, you descend first in the National Museum now. Um, but you descend into the bowels of the boat, 
and they literally have like statues or mannequins, whatever you want to call them, inside the space, how they would have been head to toe. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, my goodness, just, just getting through that piece. So I can't even imagine, like you said, if the heart could take all of that, I think it's something for me. And you know, the difference between me and my wife, sometimes I talk about, I need to have that experience to keep me reminded and grounded. Um, she's more of an empath in the sense that she feels like she really, really feels. So something like that would be probably very overwhelming for her. But yeah. for me, like I, I need that to charge me up for me to keep going. Um, so that's, that's something that I would sit with, even though it would be very heavy for my heart. Mm. You know, there's a, on these civil rights trips that I lead, um, we stop at Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. And we stop at this one place that's the slave, it's called the Slave Haven Museum. And it was a house that an African-American woman bought from a, a family, it was owned by, I think, a family of German descent. And when she bought it, she started looking and seeing, and she found these passageways, and hidden underground tunnel, and discovered that it was a stop on the underground slave railroad, like a mm. serious stop. And so she donated it. She said, I can't live in here. I'm going to, mm. you need to see this. And so it's now a museum run by these great sisters, really great, strong women, you know, wonderful. And um, when we go inside, you know, we, you go into a little space that's down below where the folks were living. You're looking like, this is really small, but you remember people were different size back then. Mm -hmm. um, but they give you a visual tour. They walk into the house. They have this one picture, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's this great picture of the, of the Atlantic Ocean. And the woman talks, well, it's a, a woman or a man, whoever is leading your tour talks about it. And they say, you know, um, there was a time, or this is the case still right now, in um, during the slave the, 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 during the Atlantic slave trade, they would throw over bodies of people who were rebellious or people who died. Mm. And to this day, sharks still follow a pattern that's reflective wow. of the slave trade. Wow. Their pattern was disrupted mm. mm -mm -mm. four hundred years ago, and they still to this day swim in those circles because that became their feeding ground. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Woo! Right? And like, and, and this is the history. And I'm so, I'm so grateful for the stuff that you do because I see it on Instagram. Like when you, when you post some of the things that like, I would love, at some point I would love to take that tour. Definitely would. Um, because this, this, the amount of information we do not receive in school. Oh, completely. Completely. We, we just don't. We just don't. Even if you're in Memphis, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they might not receive yeah. Yeah. some of that information. Yeah, yeah. We're, you're in Philadelphia. I'm in New York. Mm -hmm. There's a lot we don't see mm -hmm. in the apartment. Just Absolutely. right here. I just, just the other, the wall. I went on a walk um, during this virus, and just to get out, I walked down to the what's called the Williamsburg Bridge. Then my, and it's funny, it's on the way to my barber shop. And I walked past this little like urban garden all the time. I was looking at it, oh, just like being outside, like, wow, look at that. Somebody goes, oh, you know, this was an African burial ground. Mm. I was like, what? This, this is five blocks from my house. And I was like, excuse me? And they said, yeah, so the people who take care of the garden now, they got a plaque, they tell the whole story, they have, the, they have a very particular name for it related to the people that are permanently buried there, and they honor, they, they honor the ancestors that are buried under the garden they have. And I said, I've walked past that who knows how many times in the past 20 years and i had no idea hidden in plain sight mm -hmm. yeah i go look look right over the black and i was like wow that was a life-changing moment you know? wow wow yeah, yeah. This, this it's just so much rich history um yeah. that's, kept from us. that's mm -hmm. essentially kept from us yes it's right in front of our eyes you are absolutely right you are absolutely right and the more and more um like folks like you do these these tours you know, give information. Um, like, I think I live down the block from one of the stops on the Underground Railroad. Um, I think it's called the Johnson House. And, yeah. you know, just because like, Harriet Tubman was in and out of these streets. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And feeling like that's where she was. Yeah. Um, so just like the, the history, like, I felt the same way, like growing up in Harlem and just walking down Malcolm X Boulevard um, and just understanding the, the, the great, the greatness um, of our ancestors who have paved the way, whose blood was literally shed um, for us, right? That's why, that's why I really appreciate the shirt as a reminder yeah. um, about the riches of our history, um, the things that they hide from us intentionally, um, the things that 
you know, we don't know. So when people start to say, hmm, I wonder why COVID-19 is really starting to hurt people who are black and brown, except like, we don't have any type of framework for that because it wasn't taught to us intentionally. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, to, to, the, and it's Salvador, Bahia is what I'm talking okay. about. Brazil. That's the strength they have. They were not robbed of their culture. They kept to their African traditions and their ways of worship and their food mm. and experiences. I've, I've, I had my friends who are well traveled who've been back and forth to Africa. This place in Bahia was more really powerful. Um, so it's really intense. And I'll um, wrap up this section because I want to get to this question I have for you next um, mm -hmm. with this notion. Um, I remember, because there's, there's also, I'm on 7th Street between 1st and 2nd. And okay. on 2nd around the corner, I learned about three years ago, there's another stop on the Underground Railroad, a house. Mm. Now a house for, for women who need help and support in a place of in shelter and the like. Um, but I asked a question, I said, well, where are the other, or well, my, tra my travels I also ask, can you name some other Underground Railroad stops? And the answer is no, because otherwise they, they were all a secret. Mm. So that's why we don't know most of them because they had to remain secret. Like mm -hmm. people would be murdered if they yeah. found out what they were doing. Yeah. So interesting. So interesting. So this question I have for you is um, about this time period that we're in, doing the work we're doing, working remotely. You know, um, what are you telling your young black men that you mentor in this time period? What are you What are you communicating to them? Hmm. You know what? I'm. I'm. Um, it's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be accessible and as visible as possible. That's number one. Uh, number two, I try to put things in context in the sense of, you know, you know, as a young boy, I didn't really like the old heads telling me, listen, bro, you know, back in the day, we had to deal with X, Y, and Z, so calm down, it's not that deep. So I don't, I don't want to do that either. Um, I want to acknowledge that this is a trying time. Um, you're missing out. For some folks who are seniors, they're missing out on their senior year or their senior events. Commencement's going to look totally different if they have it at all, right? Um, you think about some folks who have just had school as an escape, um, yeah. Yeah. a place where they could be themselves without having to put on that mask, so to speak, right? Um, so I've been talking to them, just sharing with, with them about, you know what? Embrace this time to reflect on who you are. Um, embrace this time to reflect on your life thus far, um, and then think about what your goals are moving forward. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to learn about yourself in this time and space? Um, what were some of the challenges um, that you were going through, like really leading to those, those feelings of, I feel lonely, or I feel lost, or I feel uncomfortable, leading to those feelings, and then understand when this is all over and, and done, you got through loneliness, you got through feeling uncomfortable. You got through, you know, not understanding whether or not you could make it. Um, so it was about one, trying to set the foundation for folks to understand what resilience is. Um, and also not to pressure them with, oh my goodness, um, this is such a life-changing, unprecedented event. Yeah, okay. Like for, for us old heads, that's what we're feeling. This is their life as they're growing into it. Um, so this is a part of their life. It shouldn't define them, but this should be a stepping stone or a launching pad um, for the stuff that they want to do. So I would hope those folks who weren't as focused become more focused on the other end. Uh, those folks who weren't as serious in terms of like school or in terms of like health or in terms of, you know, connections, that they understand that there's a real need for that. Um, so I've been trying to tell them to lean into your, comfort, uh, your, your, your emotions, whatever they might be. Um, Affirm that, yes, they exist, and it's fine that you feel those, um, but also try to give some type of guidance in terms of goal setting, in terms of, listen, think about when this is over. It's, it's, it's cool to be in the moment, but also think about when this is over, because one, that helps you strategize, but also mm -hmm. gets your mind to a, a better place, so to speak. Um, but it's, it's tough when you can't really be in space with them. It's something about, you know, even our conversation right now, like it would be totally different if we were in the same room. Oh, you know? I mean, it's just this, this not being in proximity, right, um, is tough. So I think there's, there's, there's some folks in particular who are struggling um, because their identity was wrapped up in school yeah. in a lot of ways. And yeah. because that's removed, their identity, you know, they're questioning it or, you know, they don't, they don't feel like their full self because they're not their full self. A piece mm -hmm. has lost. So it's, it's almost like grieving. Um, mm -hmm. So just trying to tell them, 
you know, it's going to be okay. Everything's good. If you need me, I'm here. I got my virtual office set up so folks could pop in whenever they want to, um, to the house party app. And, you know, other than that, just looking forward to getting in contact with them when this whole thing is over. That's a, that's, that's mm -hmm. a good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about yeah, you know? Well, I'm struggling with that because I, you know, in my institution where I work part time, mm. I'm not really there. I mentor a young guy and we've been just writing like, like messages back and forth each other. And, um, but I, I've been, I've been trying to, you know, I'm a good interloper. And I've been trying to stick myself into the affinity group, the affinity space in there. I've been thinking about that. And I, you know me, I kind of went big. I went to somebody that knows Meek Mill. I was like, get Meek to come into my affinity group and tell the boys they'll be all right. Mm. You know, I was like, what can you do? I went to a friend who knows him. Like, this is what I need. I'm asking mm -hmm. for the big thing. He mm -hmm. sits at home, like all the rest of us, so pop on for like five, 10 minutes. So if you listen, say yes. But... They pulled back and they found someone else. It's actually a Germantown cat that I was like, wow, he's been, my friend was like, this guy is much closer to them. Why I get someone at 50,000 feet to talk? And it's interesting that I was, as you're talking, I'm thinking about how I was working so externally, you know? Cause I was like, how can I bring in the flashy bright to mm -hmm. get in the room? And it's, it's a bit of understanding of the community cause everybody is not showing up. Oh my goodness, my whole joint back in. I got my whole joint just cut off. Wow. <laughs> they trying to set me up. Done. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was still recording or not, but we'll, I guess we'll see it's, later on. It says it's still recording. Yeah, it's oh. still going. Well, that, was, that was a fiasco, but it's raw and unedited. Hey, it's raw and unedited. People get it. You know what? That was a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> bathroom break. But my fault, man. I just got kicked out of here. Um, oh, I was good. listening to you talking about what you were doing, you trying to get Meek out here. You know, you were thinking about externally. Yeah, yeah, and I, but that, while I still would love that, because it would be a nice splash and a great thing for the kids, be like, ah, oh! and also to bring more folks in the room, I'm thinking about the fact that I'm working so, ex I'm trying to get something external and flashy, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to just doing it right here. And that makes me think about, that takes me on the journey of myself, and thinking like, what are you thinking about mm -hmm. that you need to do this, as opposed to you doing the work? And also, it's part, I'm part-time in my institution, I'm not there all the time. I don't have the, all the deep relationships that I wish I did have. That's something I'm th I've been thinking about. But I've been, I've been spending more time with these young women who are reading, I pulled this up right as you close your eyes. Yes. This is a book I taught in 19 something when I was fresh out of college and teaching at a high school in East Harlem. Look at that. Hey now. Such a Park East Secondary School, 106 oh. in Park. Well, you know, you know what's crazy? Guess don't who went there? Who? Two of my sisters. No, are you serious? They went to Spes. Yes, they did. What years? Ah. Hmm. So, so, so. Are they older one, than you or younger than you? Older than me. So one is 10 years, one is about 10 years older than me. Okay. So she, so she was born in 78. Uh, I couldn't have taught her. Okay, then my other sister was born in like, they, but they probably were there while you were there. Yo. They had to be, because Cameron oh. was there too. Yes, I Cameron was in my class. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! You're just gonna be like, yo, that dorky guy who was like young and didn't know what he was doing? That was me! Yo! I taught the life and works of Toni Morrison. And I was, I was fresh out of college. and didn't yo. know what the heck I was doing. That was my first year of teaching. It was crazy. I taught the life and works of Toni Morrison, the African American autobiography, and documentary filmmaking. Wow. And I was like this, <laughs> what's wow. going on? Well, I had to off to you, sir. <laughs> We're connected like that? Look at this. Dang. That's Look crazy. That. Wow. Only at the barbershop. I know, right? See, so that's how, this is, this is the magic. That's amazing. Wow. That was quite an experience. I love to talk to your sister someday about their time there. Oh, for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah, I love to have that conversation because I got, Definitely. I've got, I got notes. I was, I was, so she was there the year they were making the movie. Probably so, yes. The, it's, called, it's called High School 2 by Fred Wiseman. That was my first film job, my first big film job. Okay. Nothing. I'm not right. talking. So, yeah, I got two sisters who went there. They're, I think they're two years apart. They're two years apart. Mm -hmm. I was in my class, yo. And when I heard that line he has, this is dedicated to all my teachers that are out there trying to pay off their student loans. I was like, oh! <laughs> That's crazy. 
I'm, I'm glad my internet wasn't acting up during this moment. <laughs> wow. wow. That's beautiful. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, so I was, I've been working with the ladies, and it's been amazing. And the thing they said as we started this next section, like, it's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on in this book. And I was like, that's a beautiful way to start our conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been really just sitting down with them and like talking and they're, they're sitting here struggling with like what women do and who women are and how we, issues of beauty and notions and family fairness. It's, it's incredible to experience. I love, I can't, I love reading this book of young black women. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They're just like, I remember, I remember at SPES, at Central Park East Secondary School, this young woman, her name was Tanisha and she was fierce. She's like, yo, Sula is a slut. She walked in class like that. And I was like, yes, bring it on. Talk to me, talk to me. I'm, I'm sitting there trying to do like the whole, like, well, the feministic perspective and mm -hmm. women literally just like, nah, nah, you don't do that to your girl. And I was like, yes, this is, let's go. It was amazing. It was That's amazing. Awesome. I, I took my kids around to see Toni Morrison speak at St. John of the Vines. This is before mm. it was free, like um, Nobel Peace Prize. She was speaking. We all went early, got good seats. Like, imagine that moment of them seeing her in St. John Divines. You that's know St. John Divines? That's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That oh, was amazing. My teaching, goodness. Teaching is a blessing, isn't it? Oh, teaching. my. Listen, the, the experiences you can have, the yeah. lives you can be a part of. Forget, forget like, touch, but the, the lives you can be a part of. Yeah. Like, it's just beautiful. And, it, and it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. That's, that's why I raised that question, because I, I've been struggling with that concept. I mean, I have my mentee, and he's awesome. He's really great. He's a super, super guy, present, nice, comfortable, and good. And like, just, just figuring out what it means to be a young man in the world. But I, I do think about all the young men I see I don't have a chance to interact with. And I, of course, I can't affect everybody and reach everyone. But with my work and what I want, I want to, I want to, I think about what I needed when I was a teenager. And I think about how I, as a lower income child, who went to an incredible school and identifies so intensely with the place, if it happened shut down now, mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do in mm -hmm. my house, trying to do homework all day long. With, with, I, didn't, I didn't have a homework space. I was on my, sitting on my bed. You're right. Or, or if lucky enough to be at the dining room table if the stuff was moved. But the TV is playing in the other room. I'm not, right. not gonna be working in the factory all day to turn the TV down so I can focus. So I went upstairs in my room, you know, and that was not, imagine being, if I, being stuck in there right now, I don't know I, what I would do. In my I mind can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. And it's, and, and it's amazing that you brought that up too, because I'm, now, now that you brought that up, I'm reflecting. So, because I went to boarding school. Yeah. And the reason yeah. why I went to boarding school is because I wanted to get out of Harlem, you know, and so I'm thinking about if I had to leave and go back, and then I'm inside that space, have my three sisters there, it's me, and my mother, who worked for the post office, so she would still be out doing the, the doing the essential work, which is scary. Would be scary. Which would be scary. And I'm trying to manage online classes with my siblings trying to manage them. It, it would be so much. I I can't even yeah. fathom. Yeah, yeah. They need us. They need us. I've been trying to do all I can to just be there. I've been I've been doing things like just showing up at sessions and meetings. Like I'm not. I ain't gonna say it, but I I saw the Zoom link, so I'm here. And I wrote I wrote like. <laughs> We got y'all. <laughs> that's beautiful. it. You know, that's beautiful. Yeah, I know. I think, you know what? So this is something that I've been thinking about before. Um, and this is something that maybe we might have to get together and do. Um, Cause I've been thinking about sending care packages per, um, to, to different places, but this was before all this happened. Cause I was thinking about my experience. I'm sure you can relate. You go to a place that is not necessarily built for you. You might have people like there who look like you. And you might have some folks who are trying to make sure it's a little bit more palatable and welcoming. So you can have a sense of belonging. But if you talk about hair care products, yes. if you talk about food that you like to eat, if you talk about all these things, I was thinking about what does it, what would a black pack, instead of a backpack, a black pack, right? What would that look like as a care package nice. where you can send some stuff to people who need it because they can't get the, the resources that they would usually get from the block, the bodega, the corner store, right? Um, mm -hmm. I've been I thinking about that. that so let, me, let me tell you the one thing that would be in there, that soft brush. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. You need that. Because when you when you think of when you're in these places and you go to the Rite Aid or the CVS or whatever it is to get the brush, and like yo, they ain't got no 
All these brushes are hard. This You're trying to make me scratch my scalp out right, there. Exactly. Exactly. They don't have what I need. I mean, then you go down the little aisle that got like the ethnic stuff. Ethnic, yes. And it's like, who's picking this stuff? Because it's never in those areas, it's never for you. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. So that's that's something to think about. Let's I'm with it. The, come on, the Brown Juice Barbershop sponsor care package. Let's listen. Listen, we got because there's there's certain things you can put a do rag in there, a little bit of like a wave cap. You can put a bonnet in there, you know, a shower cap, little bottle of Vaseline, little bottle of Vaseline. You know, if you want the lip balm, you can get that. Exactly, get get that and get that get that real shea butter from the yes, one twenty fifth Street. Yes, yes, get a whole tub of that, and that that would be cool. We, we on that? We on that? I'm with, we on it. That. I'm with it. 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 Yes. Seasoning. That's what? Yes. 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 That's, that, that's in the works. That's gonna be in the works. I love it. I love it. This is beautiful. This is so beautiful. This is this is this is what I need. I really need this. So thank you. For sure. It's, me it's medicine. It's medicine. So it really is. you know, it's just it's great to laugh. Um yeah. it's great to love. It's great to yeah. just, you know, lean into conversations that other folks probably wanna have but can't have because they're not yeah. getting out there. So Hopefully folks could join in on the conversation with us, maybe leave some comments. What what's on their mind? What do they want us to talk about? You know? I'm with it. I'm with it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I guess I guess we could wrap this one up, huh? Sure. Yes. But I, I got I got one last request. Let's do it. I need your guidance on this one. Let's do it. Because I had a revelatory, beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. And I need your guidance. I want you to work with me on this. Let me take a sip for that. <laughs> so my godson mm -hmm. turned 11 on Thursday, April 9th, when it's his birthday. And so he's out in Coney Island and we did a FaceTime to say happy birthday and he showed me his Legos. He's still, he's still like, he's 11. He's still like, he's going to junior, he's going to high school next year. Okay. I'm just going to be junior high school next junior year. High school. And is like, you know, is, is trying to figure it all out. And he said to me, and it touched my heart, and it made me so happy. We're talking about something, he goes, hey, uh, Uncle Andre, I, <clears throat> I really like rap. Rap is legendary. And I was like, what? You know, because you know, they, they, they're not paying attention to stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, he got it, and I was like, the, fr the, the first thing I thought was like, there is a God. The second thing I thought was, I want to talk to Mikael and develop a Spotify playlist to show him like what he should know from back in the day. Yes. With reflection and respect for what's happening today. Yes. Like, how do we do that? Like, this is your this is your personal list. Yes. As a young 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 black boy learning that hip hop and rap is like something. Yes. I, I don't think I think I don't even think he knows what hip hop is. Hey, like, he's like, Rap is great. Rap is legendary. I'm like, wow. This mm. is like a beautiful moment. So my, my first one was like, I got to get Mikhail on this. We got to work on that. Oh, for sure. I mean, it sounds like, for me, it sounds like a tunes timeline. That's what it sounds like. Get some things together. You know, we can have, forget that. We have the Spotify playlist, but an annotated playlist. Mm. So you have a little bit of information that goes with it. So you got the song. What's the context? What's the year? What's important about it? As a matter of fact, one of my colleagues, um, she's an English teacher, mm -hmm. um, and I think she teaches hip hop to her eighth graders um, at the end when they're writing some reflective essay, something like that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But she gave me a book, and it's called the Rap Yearbook. I think so, I have that. Yes. So the Rap Yearbook has, you know, every song from a number of different years. What was the most popular song and why? Then they have the one that was like the the honorable mention. I think that's a good place to pull from. And then we could curate with some of our own information. I would also like cross-reference it with another song and then also maybe an R&B track, maybe mm -hmm. a reggae track, mm -hmm. and just really just talk about the different moments and the different waves of hip hop. Um, that would be beautiful. I'm definitely on that. Wait, think about it. He doesn't yet know who Young MC is. How lucky is he for what he's about to discover? Talk about it. Talk <laughs> about beautiful. it. And the fact that he asked for it. Right, right. That's the beautiful right, piece. Right, right. Delivery. It's my job. He's been here before. Yes, exactly. He's been here before. Awesome. Well, I'm down. I'm down for it. I'm definitely down for it. 
you know, anything hip hop, definitely down for it, man. So cheers to that. Another cheers to you. One. Another beautiful one. Yes. So Brown Juice Barbershop, take a little sip. Hope everyone's doing well. So more for the ancestors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, man. Thank Peace. you. Take it All easy. Right. Thank you too. Later.